despair in life let me bring hope where there is darkness only light and where there's sadness ever joy oh master Good morning. This is Father Scott Leanna at St. Thomas of Canterbury Episcopal Church uh, coming together with you this morning on Sunday, September 13th. Uh, today is celebrated as the 15th Sunday in the season of Pentecost. And as we come together this morning to worship God, I want to invite us at the outset to uh, just kind of take a breath, get ourselves in a comfortable posture position so that we can Pray and be a part of this remote worship experience. Let's bring the mind to God, uh, whoever is on our heart and our mind as we come together for prayer. And uh, let's take just a brief pause before we enter into our worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. I, am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness. 
He satisfies you with good things, and your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep us, keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for all those who fear him. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Welcome to those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak only eat vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is, all, is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether they, we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's, for to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children, and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. 
Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my Heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, our Gospel reading this morning leaves us no choice. We have to talk about the F word, <laughs> forgiveness. This is a very challenging part of our faith, isn't it? And yet, Christians are kind of supposed to be known by forgiveness. And, and, and sometimes this idea that we sort of uphold this as one of the sort of defining values of who we are, we heard it certainly echoed in the second reading that Sally proclaimed from the letter of Paul to the Romans. We see forgiveness unfolding in the first reading this morning, where Joseph is dealing with his brothers who had treated him so treacherously. So this idea of upholding forgiveness kind of puts us a little bit out of step and, and, and should make us seem even perhaps uh, a little bit strange. And so we have Peter saying to Jesus, how many times do I have to forgive? And, and in some translations, as we heard this morning, say 77 times. Some translations say 70 times, seven times. The idea is, is it's a certain amount of limitlessness when it comes to forgiving. We are supposed to sort of emulate or be like the God who loves and who forgives us. And so we might just ask ourselves, perhaps, why? Why do we forgive? Why are we called to forgive? And I want to lift up for us maybe just sort of three reasons why we forgive and, and what the blessing or the gift or the grace is in that for us as we try to live more and more like Jesus. We forgive because we have been forgiven first. We forgive because we first have been forgiven. In, in Christian tradition, there's this collection of teachings and writings from what is termed the Desert Fathers or the Desert Mothers, those ancient Christians who began to sort of live together in Christian community going all the way back to the third century. And, and oftentimes they illustrated their teachings with, with different actions or, or sayings that, that they would offer for those who were seeking to know Jesus. And the story is told about... Father Anthony, who at one time in a gathering of, of the desert monks who had come together for prayer, Anthony had a very large bag of sand that he carried on his back with one hand, and then in front of his face, with his other hand, he carried just a very small little bag of sand. And he walked around like this for a while until one of his students, one of his pupils said, Father, what are you doing? And he said, well, the very large bag of sand that I'm carrying on my back are my sins, which are many, and which weigh me down. The very small bag of sand that I hold in front of me are my brother's sins. And as long as I keep looking at those, then I don't really have to think about the sins that I carry around. And so we forgive because we first have been forgiven. And in our forgiveness, we find hope and new life and grace. This is not about shame. This is not about heaping upon ourselves how terrible we are or, or all those kinds of things. This is not at all about that. This is about the freedom of recognizing that in Christ we have been given the gift of hope and new life and a new beginning. So coming from that place of forgiveness in our own lives, it's only natural that we would want to extend and to share that with others. Second, we might say that we forgive because it frees us. 
It frees us from the shackles of, of pain and resentment that we can carry around if we're not careful. And, and somehow that can be sort of a defining attribute of who we are. And, and that anger, that anger and that bitterness can become more and more deeply sort of steeped into our very existence. And so part of the reason we forgive then is because it frees us. The rabbi and author Harold Kirshner talks about a pastoral counseling situation where a young woman came to him with three children. And, and one day her husband simply said, I don't love you anymore. And he walked out of the marriage, walked out of the family, moved to another state. She was devastated. And she went to Kirshner because she had just this powerful resentment and, and bitterness and hatred. And, and over time he broached with her the idea of forgiveness and she said I could never forgive him because I could never condone what he did and Kirshner said don't forgive him because you condone it it wasn't right it was terrible but forgive him so that you can emotionally let go of him the way that he physically let go of you and your children forgive him so that you can be free now, this sometimes can be easier said than done because some of us carry some pretty deep hurts and some pretty deep wounds. And yet it is a simple yet profound truth of our faith that the forgiving we do often frees us far more than the one we have forgiven. We can even forgive those who aren't asking for our forgiveness simply to allow ourselves to be free from the shackles that can be placed upon us by our own resentment or pain or bitterness. We might think of Jesus on the cross saying, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And we forgive because it really changes us. It truly transforms us. We might think about the work being done by the Forgiveness Project here at the University of Wisconsin in Madison and the multiple studies about how people's lives are changed once they become open to forgiveness in the healing that it brings. Several years ago, a movie came out about a true story. The movie was called The Railway Man, but it was the story of Eric Lomax, a British engineer who served in the army during World War II. And he was captured by his enemy and he was sent to what was called the Death Railroad in Burma a notorious uh, prisoner of war camp, which was really a slave camp. And, and, and little by little, while he was there, Lomax collected just little bits and pieces of, of wire and, and, and different materials, and, and amazingly was able to use an old discarded Jeep battery and created a radio that would allow him and his compatriots to listen to the BBC and begin to get news about the progress of the war. Lomax was discovered and he was held in a cage, and he was waterboarded, and he was cruelly tortured. And the person who was his interrogator and his torturer was a Japanese soldier named Takashi Nagosi. And that name was seared into Lomax's mind. After the war had ended and Lomax returned to Great Britain, he was haunted by nightmares of what he endured and went through, and it got to the point where he resolved to go back to Burma, find Takashi Nagosi, and kill him, and then kill himself. He was so eaten by the searing pain that was embedded in him from what he had known and experienced. And he went to Burma, and he found Nagosi. And instead of killing him, began little by little to talk to him and then came to forgive him. And years later, when he died, Negosi's widow contacted Lomax and asked if he would speak at his funeral. And he did. And it was a testimony to the transforming power of forgiveness. We forgive because we have first been forgiven. We forgive because it frees us from the shackles that we can carry through life. We forgive because it transforms us. And we forgive because we believe in a risen Savior who forgives. Do you have a hard time forgiving 
Is there something perhaps that you struggle with that you say, I will never forgive? An easy way to begin this process of healing is to simply pray for the willingness to forgive. Let God do the forgiving. And, and bring God into that relationship and situation and simply say, God, please, make me willing to forgive at some point. <laughs> and it works. It truly does. So what I'd like to offer and ask you to do in, in coming days is, is maybe just spend a little more time with the Lord's Prayer, particularly that line, forgive us our trespasses, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have trespassed or sinned against us. We might want to pray for the willingness to forgive for those difficult areas in our lives where, where we're withholding forgiveness. We might want to thank and praise God for those times in our lives when we have known forgiveness and how freeing and life-giving that can be. And above all, we ask God to help us to be more and more like Jesus, our risen and forgiving Savior. Amen. Amen. Continuing our prayer, we profess our faith in God in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of the people this morning is Form 6. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Stephen, our bishop, Scott, our priest, Marge, our deacon, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For those in our community celebrating birthdays or anniversaries. Those who are ill, those traveling, and those in college, technical school, or serving in the military. We also remember those on our parish prayer list their names are listed in the weekly letter. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name 
forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially the deceased members of this parish, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put, who put their, their trust, trust in you. This morning in our book of intercession, we are asked to pray in thanksgiving for all who have accepted the ministry of caregiver, give them strength and support. For Ingrid, that she will have the guidance and support she needs. For Catherine, wife and mother of three, being treated for cancer. For Ryan, his needs and concerns. For Cliff, who was diagnosed with aggressive lymphoma, and for Donna and the family. We pray as this school year has gotten underway for teachers, students, and school staff and professionals. We ask for God's blessing upon them during this time of pandemic. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most, most merciful, merciful Father. Father. In, In your, your compassion, compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. I'd like to thank this morning everybody who is participating in leading our worship. It is Margaret Doan, our senior warden, and is taking care of the video recording. Our elector this morning, Ms. Sally Gregg, our parish deacon, Reverend March Kiss, and our music director, Mr. Joe Nuval, who is adding in music and creating the, the finished product uh, that you are experiencing this morning. We are grateful for all of their ministries. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And so with angels, archangels, all the company of heaven, we praise you as we join in their unending hymn of praise.
gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms on the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. And so we recall that on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he'd given you thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit that they may be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us, together with Mary, the mother of Jesus, St. Joseph, her spouse, blessed Thomas of Canterbury, and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and God's Son, Jesus Christ. May God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.